can see here Maddie Brown going up, just landing on her knee there by the looks of it. She's grabbed that and straight away she knew that she wanted to come off, didn't she? Well, she has had a, an ACL injury in the past, so. So Medhead has got Brown, oh no. Oh, she's grabbing at the left knee. Oh. She looks in big trouble. Her sister at the moment is battling a knee injury. Bull. Yeah, the wobble. Oh, you hate, you don't want to diagnose, but goodness me. You're thinking of Mr. and Mrs. Brown right now with one daughter coming back from ACL surgery, I think it was. Horrible. A horrific. Horrible, absolutely. We were, because we were there for both of them. We're, and we both went, no. No, we, 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 we knew straight away with well, both we, of them. We, yeah, but we were hoping with Madison it wasn't. Mm. And the Kelsey one was just, you feel like you're going to vomit. It's but horrible. you've got to push on and, you know, we've got to be there for them. And, and, uh, and But it is a horrible feeling. It's horrible. The thing that people don't understand is this, this is their job. And so now they can't work for 12 months, right? People don't, when you explain it to people, they say, oh, you know, I'm just done there. So you don't know how hard they have to work to get back to where they And we know because Madison's already done it once. I don't know how much you... And the saddest part is he's done... <laughs> a left and I've done a right. So they had no hope. And that was the first thing the surgeon asked, have you had ACLs within your family? And I did mine playing netball. He did his playing footy. Football. I, I'd give anything to give my two daughters a knee, a good knee, but I haven't got a good knee to give, so I <laughs> that's one. out of the question. I got a left <laughs> one. Yeah, so no, it's 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 pretty heartbreaking to have to go through it. But, you know, there are worse things in life. Have a look at what's happening at the moment with the bushfires. Hey, we're still alive. We're down here having yeah. a holiday and we still laugh, you know, and we sincerely hope that they can both come back and because we know that they're both very good at what they do and they bring a lot of people a lot of joy. You can't explain to people the feeling, and I know lots of people feel this, watching your children do something and do it as well as they do it. You know, Chris and I have had throughout our life, we've had some successes and some failures. Uh, and the six, our personal successes are, have been great, but nothing, nothing. like your following kids. your kids and, and watching their successes. It's yeah. just beautiful. It is. <laughs> He's the softy on the hard one. <laughs> It's hard to put into words how hard it is because there's a reason I play a team sport is because I love to be part of a group and to do so much work in the pre-season, I'd obviously retired from Diamonds and focused on Magpies and was really excited. I felt like I was probably in the fittest form of my life and I was playing with some really good netball and there was that new challenge of playing centre and the dynamics of the team and it was just so exciting. So to be two weeks away from round one and there's all this buzz around this group that have, you know, in really good shape and we've got all this potential to then, yeah, have the, have the news that you won't be part of it was really difficult. Rehab is the loneliest place in the world because there are good days and there are bad days and the only person to get you through it majority of the time is yourself and yeah, you rock up to training and all you want to do is be out there and you just, you just mentally you're there and your body just can't give you what you want. It's really hard to feel like you can contribute and you've got to find ways to contribute in other ways but this time I was re it was really important to also take time away and focus on other bits of my life and yeah I'd had some personal challenges along the way so I was like you know what if shit is going to hit the fan hit the fan this year um, and let me just kind of rebuild from the absolute ground up. I remember going down and thinking, never done one of these before, seen many people do it, I know exactly what I've done. And then sort of sitting there for a while being like, a lot of pain, but then just, what are you going to do? Get up, you'll be fine. Um, and I think the way it all happened, I didn't, I never expected myself to react that way, but I think I just acted on what I thought and it's how it rolled. That was the game that everything that we'd been working towards and every sort of, shit thing that had happened sort of culminated into this like first quarter that we were like oh my god this is us like this is what we've been working for for so long and and then for the second quarter that happened the way it was for me personally 
that sucked because I was like, we, I was just feeling like we got on top of it. And, and then to see them play out the game like they did, I was like, oh, it, it almost was, as a collective, we've worked so hard to build this thing. One person doesn't matter. One cog doesn't change what we've been grinding for. And I feel like the good teams and the best teams are the ones that something like that can happen and they just roll on. As much as it sucked and I wanted to be a part of it, I also was like, wow, I'm watching everything that we've worked so hard for just happen. That was really cool. I'm getting emotional because like the year sucked so much. Like everything was hard and that was so rewarding at the end. I, I struggled more with her injury than I did my own <laughs> because because I'd been through it and I know her. I was like, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, let alone the person that her, her career and everything was so good. Like her world was so happy. And I was like, oh, this was my year to take all of the hard stuff on my shoulder. And I was like, oh, I'm meant to be the older sibling. I'm meant to be there to protect her. And, and I sat there and I burst into tears and I was a mess. And when I spoke to her, I felt a little bit more relieved, but I just felt helpless because I was like, you're not meant to be experiencing this ever. No, no one, no one should. Like it's horrible. Like there's a lot of really bad things that happen, but yeah, I, I wanted to take all of that heartache and, and take it all myself. I didn't want her to have to experience it, anything. So yeah, I took it really hard because I knew that she was pretty much coming into the peak and she was playing so well. I was so excited to see where she would go in the diamond space. So yeah, it was really hard, really hard to watch. The team and netball is bigger than us getting to play, but I guess that's probably the one thing when I've been really struggling in rehab, which hasn't been a lot, but um, I think about like being able to play with her. It's like almost going back to being a child. Like, why would you want to do that? What you love first, um, your job with your best mate, like that's pretty cool. So um, that stuff's special now that I've had it taken away from me. Um, and yeah, that's probably pushing me a little bit more now. Yeah, I guess if, if that moment ever does come, and who knows, I hope it does, but nothing's guaranteed. Um, if it does, I definitely think it'll be probably one of my proudest netball moments will be to stand on that transverse line because this was the time when I felt like she was her own person and I like we'd been on our own journeys and it was like, yeah, let's come together and let's finish this off together. So yeah, it'll, it will be honestly the best moment yeah, 2020 I think is our year. Well, it's my year anyway. I'm, I'm saying it. 2020 come at me. It's awesome. <laughs>